What is going on guys? It is CH from Homebrew for Life here with a video on how to make beer in 10 minutes. I'm making this video because a lot has changed since I started brewing back in 2015. And you know what? It's a lot less confusing now. Now, this video is for the naked eye brewer. If you know anything about homebrewing or homebrewing terminology, I don't even want you here. I've had it with you. Get out of here. Full disclosure, I'm not a commercial brewer. I do not have a Cicerone certificate. I have no degree in brewing, nor do I have any credentials that I could frame and put up on a wall. All I have is experience. Experience, the one thing you cannot Google. Yeah, in this video, we are gonna make delicious beer. We're gonna hit on the three biggest topics in homebrewing. What system to buy? What system to start with? Two, we're gonna talk about methods, techniques, hacks, things you do not need to do that I was doing in 2015. We're saving time, we're saving money, ultimately so you could drink better beer faster. And three, we're gonna talk about recipe. Certain beer styles are more forgiving than other beer styles and certain beer styles are a lot more affordable than other beer styles. We are going to debunk old school methods of brewing in this video, as well as debunk old equipment that you simply do not need to use anymore. If you make it to the end of this video, you will know a ton about how to make homebrew. And I'll make you a promise right now, this will be the most informative tutorial you will ever watch in the shortest amount of time. All right, now before we talk about what system to buy, let's talk about what not to buy. All right, first and foremost, do not buy a system that's just gonna give you one or two gallons of beer. If you're like me, you'll drink it in 20 minutes. Mr. Beer Kits are super gimmicky. All the ingredients are a giant mystery just like cafeteria food. You wanna do five gallon batches. And do not buy a kit that comes with a glass carboy, AKA your fermenter. When I watch new videos of people using glass, I can tell they have no idea what they're doing. I can tell that they Googled everything that morning. Here's why glass is the enemy. Do not buy glass. Do not buy glass fermenters. It's the worst fermenter to buy by so far. I could write a book on why I hate glass fermenters, but here's some of the bullet points. I mean, for starters, they're dangerous. It's extremely dangerous. We've all broken these. You usually break them when they're full. I mean, when they're full, they're what, 40, 50, 60 pounds? So you just gave up your Saturday to brew. They've got no give, it's glass, it breaks, you're ruined. Now you've got to get stitched up, your place is a mess and you just wasted a day. Reason number two, I hate glass, they're kind of pricey. I mean, they're for five or six gallon glass corny cake, they're like 50 bucks. Glass doesn't have handles, so you have to buy the straps. What's the strap, like an another 12 bucks? So straight out of the gate, we're already at what, 60, $65? Well, now you gotta clean it and you can't take the lid off, so you have to have another brush. What's the brush? 10 bucks on Amazon? So we're already at 75 bucks, right? Straight off the gate for the worst fermenter. There's no spigot. There's no spigot, so you have to rack. So we need another siphoning king? What's, what's that, another 20 bucks? We're already at $100. After scouring the internet for systems that were five gallon batches that didn't include a glass fermenter, I came across Northern Brewers Kit and it was the best kit for the price tag by far. It's $110, but it also comes with a recipe. You want to keep your recipe to around $30. I bought my original kit six years ago for $200 and it did come with a glass carboy and it did not come with a recipe. We're going to make an amber ale today because amber ales are delicious and it seems like ambers and browns aren't even around anymore. This style is great and very forgiving. Forgiving and regards to looking like a crisp, clean lager. Your homebrew is going to look a little cloudy at first, and darker beers hide that. But don't worry, this beer is still going to be a 5.2% delicious ale. And really quick, big shout out to everybody who supported our new merch last week. You are appreciated. Northern Brewer did a great job in packaging everything. Everything is labeled and weighed out, saving us a lot of the hassle. They've also provided a detailed printout that make this batch extremely easy to follow along with. No glass, but we do have a stainless steel five gallon kettle and two food grade plastic fermenters with spigots. The plastic buckets, AKA our fermenters, have been pre-drilled, which make it a breeze to connect the spigots to. Spigots make life much easier. Do not buy a system that requires a siphon. Siphoning is a thing of the Past. They break, but most importantly, they require too much dead weight labor. And I'll explain all this other stuff as we go. For the record, plastic fermenters are my favorite fermenters in the world. I can make them for $7. Understand now that having expensive and shiny homebrew gear will not make you a better homebrewer. All that stuff is nice, but it's not necessary. If you suck at guitar, a $2,300 Gibson Les Paul will not turn you into Jimmy Page. You're still going to suck at guitar. What makes you not suck at guitar is a ton of experience practicing guitar. Northern Brewer 
Homebrew has provided us with this yeast, but I'm gonna change this part of it up. I'm gonna use a Kvike yeast. I bought this on Amazon and received it the next day. It's dry yeast, so you don't have to worry about shipping it at room temperature. I'm using this yeast because fermentation will be complete in two days. But more importantly, when you're brewing around 75 degrees and up, you're more prone to get off flavors in your homebrew. Kvike yeast does not give off flavors when fermenting hot, and that's the number one cause in off flavors in homebrew. Fermenting at too high of temperatures. I need you to stay focused. Passion is the one thing I cannot teach you. All right, bippity boppity brew day. Now I can waste an hour of your life explaining water. But I'm not going to. <laughs> in short, if the water tastes good to drink, then it's going to taste good in beer. We're going to be doing a partial mash today. That means we are combining extract with grain. The stuff on the left is extract. If you're using just this, it's an extract batch. The stuff on the right is grain. If you're using just this, it's referred to as an all grain batch. Fill up your kettle with two and a half gallons of good drinking water. Put it on the stove and set the temperature to medium heat. Aim close to 155 degrees. Every home brewing kit will come with a thermometer, but the glass ones break easily and the cheap stainless ones are extremely inaccurate. The second best advice I could give to any brewer is to buy an Inkberg digital temperature control. The thermometer is spot on. Sooner or later, you're gonna have one, so you might as well buy it for your first batch. Your kit also came with a bag. It looks like a sock, but it will act as a filter, exactly like coffee and exactly like tea. We don't want the solids, just the liquid. Now take your grain and carefully dump it into the bag. Tie a knot and steep it in your hot water gonna smell delicious. This is called mashing in. You can tie it to the boil kettle or you can use a clamp if you have one so it rests like this. We're gonna leave it here for 20 minutes. Now heat up your sink with hot water and put your extract in here. This will warm up the extract so it's not as hard and it's gonna make it a lot easier to pour. After 20 minutes remove your grain bag and throw it away in a dumpster. It will smell god awful if you leave it in the morning. Now turn up your stove on high. Let's bring it to a boil and stir in your extract. The extract and grain will provide us with all the sugars we will convert into alcohol. Stir like crazy until the liquid just falls off the spoon like this. If it's still too much like syrup, it will scorch the bottom of the kettle. The recipe reads for a 60 minute boil, but I'm only going to do a 30 minute boil. The longer you boil your hops, the more bitter your beer will be. And I want this to be more of a sweet beer, aka malty. So I'm not going to do the whole hour. Once you get to boil, drop in your one ounce of hops. I'm going to set a timer for 30 minutes. In that 30 minutes, it's time to prep our cooling station. You're going to need about 20 pounds of ice, but never pay for ice. I just filled up this lettuce cabinet with ice cubes and then filled up with some water the night before every brew. Now it's a good time to sanitize your fermenter and everything else that will be touching our beer. Always make sure your spigots are closed beforehand. Now take this no rinse cleaner, dump it all in, then add a gallon of hot water. Stir it until the cleaner is dissolved. Cap the lid and shake it all around, even so it gets the inside of the lid. Once your 30 minute boil is up, transfer the kettle to your chilling station. You're gonna stir it for a good 15 minutes. Leave your spoon in there the whole time. Don't take it out and put it back in. Let's dump our cleaner solution solution from our fermenter bucket into the other bucket and let's top it off with drinking water until we hit five gallons. Now let's toss in our airlock, scissors, and yeast. I'm gonna cut the yeast packet, and now we're gonna sprinkle it into the wort. This is your wort. Wort is the term for sugar water, AKA unfermented beer. Securely fasten the lid, fill up your airlock with some of that cleaner liquid, and stick it in the lid. This is so CO2 can release without oxygen getting into the wort. Now take this thing and fill it up with some wort so you can check your gravity. Two things about checking gravity. Make sure you check it at room temperature, and make sure you have enough wort in there so you're hydrometer can float. More on hydrometers in a second. So our original gravity is 1050. That's perfect. Now stash your fermenter in a dark closet close to room temperature and start praying to the beer gods. Six hours later, I came back to check on it and the airlock was going crazy faster than I've ever seen before. And that is good news. This is not time lapse, ladies and gentlemen. This is real time. Back in the day, we were taught to ferment for two weeks. Now we're fermenting for only two days. All right, two days later, and let's pull another gravity reading. Our gravity finished out at 1010. Now Google ABV calculator and plug in your gravities. 5.2% alcohol by volume. Congratulations, you just made beer. Try your best not to pay for glass since it's pretty much trash. What makes bottling easier is using growlers and just bigger bottles. I know you have some laying around your house. Time to carbonate our beer. Pour a pint of water in a pot, bring it to boil, and then kill the heat. And then stir in your corn sugar, aka priming sugar, until it's dissolved. Now add it to your beer. Now clean all the other stuff, just like like before, the caps, the tube, the bottle filler. Here's what it looks like. It won't drain until you push down on the bottom of the filler. Want the perfect pour? Press down until it looks like it's getting ready to overflow and then quickly pull it out. Cap it, store it for two weeks. Here's the best advice I can give to any home brewer. Get to kegging fast. Bottling requires way too much work and takes 10 to 14 days to fully carbonate. Store your bottles in a closet. But two weeks later and here we have it. And the beer is absolutely delicious. If you're looking at my shitty face right now, you made it to the end. Thank you. I love you. Cheers to eating good. 
and drinking good.